Welcome back to the Dragon's Liar, everybody. My name is Wade, and this is my show, Let's Talk, where I talk about Warhammer 40k. Uh, I'm talking Tyranids because I'm doing this great series that I put into a playlist for everybody out there. So maybe you can learn something, see something, hear something that might be helpful to you. So we're talking Tyranids. <clears throat> um, let's talk about the Trigon. So there no longer is the Trigon Prime. Uh, there used to be a character model known as the Trigon Prime. They got rid of that. We just have the Trigon now. But they're still pretty cool. <clears throat> so let's get into it. So movement 10, uh, pretty good. Most monsters have a pretty big movement. Uh, keep in mind, monsters are not able to walk through walls. So ruins can be a problem for monsters. Keep that in mind. <clears throat> uh, it's also a very big base. So it's the big oval base. And I think that's a big benefit because that allows you a lot of agency when you're measuring. Um, <clears throat> they, they cover quite a lot of ground, which is pretty freaking cool. One thing I want you to keep in mind uh, when you're watching these videos is I'm filming them all from the perspective of Invasion Fleet. However, if there's something useful or handy for another um, detachment, I will throw that in there. <clears throat> because I do like several other of the uh, several of the other detachments, but I just feel Invasion Fleet has the tools to win games, has the most tools to win games consistently. So that's why I praise Invasion Fleet above all other detachments. But anyways, <clears throat> so movement ten is pretty good. Tough ten. You know, man, it feels like it's a lot. It's not. Um, you know, tough 10 is better than 9, obviously, and better than 8. 8 and 9 feel like it's a lot. 10 is obviously better. Um, you know, your plasma cannons, uh, supercharged, and um, last cannons, and heavy last cannons. And there's just, there's a lot of stuff out there that people can use that are going to melt you. So just be prepared for that. <clears throat> 3 plus save, you know, is pretty good. Obviously, it's going to turn into a 4 or a 5 quite a bit. Because, you know, you should be using as much AP2 as possible. Everybody should be using as much AP2 as possible or higher. So, you know, it's not great there. <clears throat> 14 wounds. 14 wounds is pretty good. I mean, the only other things that we have that's more than 14 wounds are 16 wounds. And, you know, that's, that's as good as it gets. So it's pretty top end of the scale there. Leadership 8, which is, you know, not great, but maybe you can put them into Synops uh, and you'll be rolling on 3d6, and that's pretty good. Um, objective Control 4, which is pretty okay. I haven't won or lost a game because of Objective Control. I either overwhelmingly take it or I don't have a prayer. One or the other. So I know someday, sooner or later, that will become important, but it's just not important now. Uh, weapons, you don't have any options. This is just how he comes. So, Bioelectric Pulse, Sustained Hits 2, which you don't see very often. Um, you know, usually I hyper-adapt for Swarming Instincts, which gives all my attacks Sustained Hits 1 against Infantry. Keep in mind, it's only against Infantry. So, obviously, Sustained Hits 2 is going to override. So, it's not going to create Sustained Hits 3. It's going to override Sustained Hits 1. So in this instance, if you're uh, attacking and you get any sixes, you'll get two additional hits. So on your to hit rolls, any sixes will create two additional hits, which, you know, is kind of what you need. Um, it's only six attacks, which is not great, but it's better than nothing. Um, you know, it's 12 inches, which is pretty good, especially when we get into the subterranean tunnels stuff um, and how you use a Trigon, in my opinion. <clears throat> so Ballistic Skill 3, it's the good side of uh, average. Strength 5, you know your Wounded Marines on 3s. 0 AP, not good. No bueno. Not good. It's it's a trash weapon that might get you a couple wounds here or there, and you're living on a prayer. You're Bon Jovi in it. 1 damage, maybe it'll get you something, and maybe that will be important later, but you're living on a prayer, is what I mean by Bon Jovi. <clears throat> uh, he shines in the melee weapons, Trigon Scything Talons, 12 attacks, pretty good. Weapon skill 3, it's the good set of average. Strength 9, pretty good, because you're double-toughing Marines. You're wounding Marines on 2s. 
AP2, I always say good, better, best. So AP1 is good, AP2 is better, AP3 is best. Um, and 3 damage, the way the 3 damage becomes important is then you really start to hurt the, the beefier things. Um, the elite infantry, you're talking Terminators and Blade Guard Veterans and all kinds of stuff like that. The 3 damage is, is good. <clears throat> um... You know, with the AP2, a lot of times you're uh, going to trigger the invulnerable save um, <clears throat> of models. So you can't get around that, but <clears throat> keep in mind, they do have a damage rating. So if they're between 1 and 5 wounds, um, then each time they would make an attack, you subtract 1 from the hit roll. So you got to keep in mind, they become less useful near the end of their life. Which kind of comes into how, in my opinion, you best use a Trigon. Uh, so, core abilities. Deep Strike. So keep in mind, when you Deep Strike a Trigon, it... Normally, when you Deep Strike, you have to be 9 inches away. Okay? <clears throat> but they have a special rule. <clears throat> but I think that's part of the conversation is... I think if you're going to take a Trigon, you should be Deep Striking it. Um, and you want to deep strike into the enemy backfield uh, to take objectives away from them or to cause them uh, panic because you're overwhelming them. Um, <clears throat> you know, a Trigon coming up under the ground on a flank where there's not a lot to defend against is pretty freaking scary because he's hard, to, he's hard to stop right up front. If he has to cross the battlefield at you, you can probably take him. Or you can hurt him enough that when he gets to you, he's not that scary. But when he pops up right in front of your face, if you pop him up uh, and then do charge him in the charge phase, so you're going to pop up, shoot, which is okay. It's not great. Uh, and then you uh, succeed in the 9-inch charge. Maybe you need that 1 CP for a reroll. Uh, but if you do succeed on the 9-inch charge he's going to cause some damage. And if that, if that group is standing on top of an objective, uh, you, you are going to, you're going to kill two or three Marines, maybe even four Marines. <clears throat> um, I, I would argue five. We can do the math hammer on it later. But point is, is you could, you could take a five man, potentially you could really hurt a 10 man and then you're tying them up. <clears throat> uh, Another really cool ability that they have is the subterranean tunnels. So each time this model is set up on the battlefield using Deep Strike, it can set up anywhere on the battlefield that is more than three inches horizontally away from enemy units. So you could set up on an objective, potentially. When doing so, if this model is set up within nine inches, so if you do choose to do within nine inches of one or more enemy units until the end of the turn, it is not eligible to declare a charge. So you're just gonna pop up and shoot. But, point is, is you could pop up on an objective. Plain, plain and simple. <clears throat> and then you could pop up on an objective and then sacrifice your shoot in the shooting phase to perform an action. So there's practical use for a Trigon. You know, they have, they have a lot of wounds and they, and they have a high toughness. So it, there's some terror tactic that can be used here, and they can be very effective with their OC4 and, you know, wiping out a squad of uh, dudes when they pop up, <clears throat> pop up and charge. It's, it's doable. It's very doable. Um, for the points, you have to kind of believe in it, and you have to dedicate to that. But when, you, when your enemy knows that you're holding a Trigon in reserve, then they're going to play a little bit differently. They're going to deploy a little bit differently. They're going. They have to cover their backfield, and they. It's harder to cover the backfield against the trigon because it's not the nine inches. It, it can be within three, and then all you have to do is survive their turn of shooting and perhaps charge. And if you're already holding the objective, then if you're already on the objective, then creates all sorts of problems for them. You know, uh, you hear me preach the uh, praises of rapid regeneration. They're not going to be inside of Synapse, odds are. So they're just going to get the 6+, plus, um, feel no pain. And maybe that's not worth it. But it's something to consider. <clears throat> um, I like the Trigon. Uh, I They're terrible to paint, but that's the last thing I'm going to say. Uh, we here at the Dragon's Eye understand that you could spend your time anywhere on the internet. So we want to say thank you for spending your time here with us at the Dragon's Eye.